So in today's video, we're going to look at what's called the excretory system. Now, this is what a lot of people call the urinary system, but the purpose of the excretory system is to get rid of what we call nitrogenous waste products. And a lot of animals need to get rid of nitrogenous waste products. So they have excretory systems, but they don't make urine. For example, birds. Birds don't make urine. They make something called urea, which is, you know, kind of like urine in a way, but they need to excrete that. So that's why the real name is the excretory system. Now, what we're going to look at in this video are the organs and why we make urine in the first place. Now, again, urine is an example of a nitrogenous waste product. It has nitrogen in it. And nitrogen, when mixed with a liquid or a solid, is yellow. That's why our urine is yellow. Yellow diamonds are formed in areas where there's high amounts of nitrogen in that area, so it gives those diamonds a yellow color. But in the case of our urine, as your body breaks down food, you're gonna break down the DNA and the RNA of those food products. Because we need nitrogen to make our DNA, our nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, and uracil. We have to have nitrogen. The problem is, right now you're breathing in nitrogen, but gaseous nitrogen is toxic. So the nitrogen we breathe in, we immediately turn around and breathe it right back out. So we cannot get nitrogen to make our DNA and our RNA from the atmosphere. We have to get it from the foods that we eat. So when you eat food, you break down the DNA, you break down the RNA, and you get nitrogen from the food product. However, we will eat more nitrogen than we need, and that puts the nitrogen into our blood in the form of ammonia. Well, you know, ammonia is a cleaning substance. It's the same chemical in products like Mr. Clean, and you can't go and drink Mr. Clean or Pine Sol. And if you think about it, Mr. Clean and Pine Sol are yellow. That's because they have nitrogen in them. But in the case of ammonia, ammonia is a poison. And every time you eat, your body automatically makes this poison and it goes into your bloodstream. Well, think of ammonia as a liquid. Okay, this is how I always use my analogy because it makes it easy for people to understand. Ammonia is a liquid and it's very easy for our cells to soak up a liquid. So we need to get rid of this chemical pretty doggone fast because it is a toxin. So what we do is we, as the blood leaves the intestines, eventually the blood goes to the liver. And one of the jobs of the liver is detoxification. So the liver is going to take that ammonia and detoxify it, it's gonna change it. Okay. The liver is gonna help filter out that ammonia and it's gonna turn it into a salt called urea. So again, think of it this way. If you think of ammonia as a liquid, it's very easy for our cells to absorb a liquid. Okay. It's not so easy for our cells to absorb salt. So in the case of the liver, the liver is gonna filter out this ammonia, which is toxic, but it's just gonna convert it and it converts it into something called urea, which is a salt, it's a crystal. So it's still toxic, but it's gonna take longer for our cells to absorb. So we bought ourselves a little bit of time. So then the liver can't keep the urea in it. The urea goes back into the bloodstream or it eventually goes to your kidneys. Okay. So the urea is added back to the blood and it's going to be filtered out again in our kidneys. So when we think about the excretory system, we think about our kidneys as being the main organ but the liver also plays a role in this. So as our body is breaking down this ammonia, or is breaking down DNA, it makes ammonia. The liver takes that ammonia and converts it into urea. And then the urea goes to the kidneys and the kidneys will filter that out. And that's what we use, urea plus water equals urine. This is how our urine gets made. So the more urea we have, the yellower our urine is going to be because of all the nitrogen that's in it. And so again, most people think that, or think of the kidneys as being the main organ of the excretory system. And it is a pretty important organ. We're born with two of them. And you can see in this picture, they're not equal. Our left kidney is actually a little bit higher than our right kidney. The reason for that is our liver. Our liver is the largest organ we have inside of our body. Remember, your skin is your largest organ. But the liver is on the inside of our body. And most of the liver is on the right side. So we have to have room for our liver. So that's why our right kidney is a little bit lower than our left kidney. 
But in the case of the kidneys, they are these bean-shaped organs. This is why kidney beans are called kidney beans. And they are located on either side of the spine. Lucky for us, we are bilateral. So in this case, what's on our left side is also on our right side. You know that you can live without a kidney. And kidney transplants are unfortunately quite common. Okay? But they have this brownish, reddish color to them. And they are surrounded by an adipose layer. Because we talked about how that's why you have the love handles in the back because we don't have bones covering our kidneys. And so they do have this adipose. Remember, adipose is fatty tissue surrounding them in order to help protect them. And like I mentioned, your right kidney is lower than your left. And its main function is to filter urea out of the bloodstream. So ammonia gets put into your bloodstream, goes to the kidneys. The kidneys help take that ammonia convert it into something called urea, and then the urea goes to the kidneys, and the kidneys job is to filter this urea out in order to make urine. Now, with the shape of your kidneys, they have what's called the hilum, and the hilum is this indentation or this concave area where your blood vessels attach. So let's see if I can get this to work. Right here, this little concave area, that would be the hilum. And this is where your major blood vessels attach. In the case of blood vessels, we talked about how we have what we call muscular vessels or conducting vessels. Okay. These are the ones that actually go to the organs. And in the case of your kidneys, you have the renal artery. The renal artery is, brings what I call dirty blood to the kidneys. So the renal artery is coming from the body and it's bringing that urea, it's bringing that dirty blood to the kidneys so that it can be filtered out. Anytime you see renal, renal always is referring to your kidneys. Then you have the renal vein. I say the renal vein carries clean blood. Okay? So the renal artery, remember, the arteries leave the, leave the heart and it's taking it to the kidneys. So the renal artery is bringing blood to the kidneys. So think of that blood as being dirty. Okay? It's still got urea in it. So it's going to bring the dirty blood to the kidneys, and the kidney is going to filter it out. It's going to clean it, and then the clean blood will leave the kidney through the renal vein. So the renal artery and renal vein attach to the kidneys in this area called the hilum, or some people say hilium. Now, remember, every organ in your body has a membrane that goes around it. Your heart had a membrane called the pericardium. Your bones have a membrane called the periosteum. Your intestines have a membrane called the mesentery. Every organ in your body has a membrane that goes around it. Well, and remember, there's always at least two layers. So when you see the term parietal layer, that's the layer on the outside. And then we have visceral layer, that's the layer on the inside. So if you were to be doing a dissection and you were to touch the kidney, of the pig, you would be touching the visceral, excuse me, the parietal layer. That's the outermost layer. Well, remember you have the parietal layer, you have the visceral layer, they make up the membrane around the organ, and there's always a space in between them, and that space is filled with a fluid. And that fluid tends to be called whatever the membrane's called. So like for your pericardium, which is the membrane around the heart, you have the parietal pericardium, which is the layer on the outside, the outermost layer. Then you have the visceral pericardium, and in that space in between, you have the pericardial fluid. Well, your kidneys also have membranes that go around them. And in the case of your kidneys, these membranes are called your capsules. Now, like I said, the membrane around your bone is your periosteum. The membrane around your heart is your pericardium. The membranes around your brain is your meninges. The membranes around your intestines, your mesentery. Well, the membranes that go around your kidneys are your capsules. And this is one of the few membranes in your body that has three layers. There's actually three layers of membrane around your kidneys. And we believe it's because your kidneys are so heavy, because they're full of water, that they need this extra membrane to help hold them in place. So in the case of your kidneys, like I mentioned, these are the membranes that go around your kidneys, and they are made from three layers. And it's believed that they need these three layers in order to 
One, they're so heavy because of all the water to help hold them in place. And two, one of these layers adds a protective um, buffer because there's no bones in this area. So the first one is called the renal fascia. I always remember this one because it's going to fasten your kidneys. Okay. Your kidneys, if you think about that picture, or if you look in your coloring book, and the coloring book that I have is actually on page 144, you can see how the kidneys are suspended. And it does show the right kidney a little bit lower than the left kidney in the coloring book. But you can see the kidneys are suspended and you have these tubes coming off of them. Well, just like a garden hose, you don't want those tubes to get kinked or the urine won't flow like it's supposed to. And so your kidneys have to be fastened in place. And that's the main job of the renal fascia. So if you think of fascia as being fastening, this is a thick membrane made of collagen. We've talked about collagen a lot. Remember, collagen is that quartiary protein. It's incredibly strong protein. It's like, a, it's like chains that we use to hold things in place. And this is a thick membrane made from collagen. This would be like the parietal layer. So if you were dissecting the pig or a cat or even a human, and you would see the kidneys, it looks like they're surrounded by saran wrap and it's kind of holding them in place. Well, if you were to touch them, you'd be touching this layer. This is the renal fascia, it's the outermost layer. Now, this is made from collagen. And like we've mentioned, over time, collagen does begin to stretch. And it gets to a point where your body stops repairing that collagen. As long as it's being held in place and everything's working, it's okay. Remember, we talked about how collagen helps hold your epidermis and your dermis. Okay, It helps hold them together. And over time, the collagen stretches. And so your skin sags and that forms wrinkles. Well, there is a medical condition called ptosis. And ptosis is when the collagen fibers of the renal fascia begin to stretch. And that causes the kidneys to sink downward a little bit. Now, as we get older, everybody is very, will possibly have a mild form of ptosis. Because our collagen fibers stretch and our kidneys will drop down a little bit. And for most of it's not a big deal, as long as that tube doesn't get kinked. However, in people who are malnourished, severely malnourished, people with eating disorders, ptosis is actually a common sign of malnourishment or eating disorders. Because remember, collagen is a fiber. It is incredibly hard to make. It uses a lot of nutrients. So people with um, eating disorders or extreme malnutrition, their body has to play a game and their body doesn't have the nutrients needed to repair the collagen. So a lot of people with extreme eating disorders or even those who are extremely malnourished develop severe cases of ptosis and it can cause their kidneys to drop down so much that it kinks the tube leading from the kidney so urine cannot drain the way that it's supposed to. And so that can lead to renal damage because the urine can, get, can build up in the kidneys and cause damage in the kidneys and it can lead to renal failure. Now, if you were to peel off the renal fascia, the layer underneath that is your adipose capsule. And you know that adipose is a connective tissue and it's fat. And so like I mentioned before, we have this layer of fat that goes around our kidneys in order to protect our kidneys because we don't have bones there. And if you were to peel that layer off, the layer underneath that is called the true capsule or the renal capsule. This would be the visceral layer. And you do have a fluid between each of these layers. So between the renal fascia and the adipose capsule, there's a thin layer of fluid. And then between the adipose capsule and the renal capsule, there's another thin layer of fluid. And it's just called capsular fluid. So the capsules are the three membrane layers that go around the kidneys to help hold the kidneys in place and to help protect the kidneys. Don't get that mixed up with the three parts of the kidney, which is this. So the capsules are the three layers of membranes around the kidneys. We then have three layers of the kidney. Now, in the next video, we're gonna talk about what's called the structural unit of the kidney. This is something called the nephron. Well, the nephron, think of nephrons as vacuum, vacuum tubes. Your kidneys have lots and lots and lots of these little vacuum tubes inside of them.
that we use to filter. We use to suck the trash out of our blood in order to create urine. Well, in the case of your kidney, you have something called the renal um, cortex, the renal medulla, and the renal pelvis. These are the three layers on the inside of the kidney. The first layer is the renal cortex. Anytime you see cortex, cortex will always mean the outermost layer. Like we have a cerebral cortex, okay? we have an adrenal cortex, we have a renal cortex. Cortex will always be the outside. So if you're actually holding a kidney in your hand, you would be touching the renal cortex. Now, not much happens here because if the kidney is going to get damaged, this is the layer that's going to have the damage to it. This is the layer that will get bruised. This is the layer that will get damaged. So nature hasn't put a lot of parts in the renal cortex. It doesn't have a lot of these vacuum tubes in it. Where we find most of the vacuum tubes is in this region called the renal medulla. Now, in the picture here, okay, all of this part here makes up what's called the renal medulla. Anytime you see medulla, medulla means middle. So this is the second layer. It's mostly in the middle. And this is where most of the filtering takes place. It is full of folds. Remember, folds increase surface area. And these folds are full of these little vacuums. And remember, these vacuums are going to be called nephrons. And the nephron's job is to filter the blood and create urine. So the renal medulla, this middle section, is where we're going to find most of these nephrons. And nature has designed it in a pretty interesting way. Remember, this part of your kidney has folds in it. And the folds form themselves in such a way, let's see if I can get a color here, that they form these triangles. Okay. And those folds are called your renal pyramids. I think of them as funnels. Funnels have a big part at the top and then the skinny tube going down. That's what your renal pyramids are kind of like. Your renal pyramids are full of hundreds of these vacuums. And they're vacuuming and it's vacuuming and it's making urine and it's sending urine down this tube, just like a funnel. So again, right here, this is your renal pyramid. You can see the, the folded pyramid shape. That's where all, most of our nephrons are. And you can see the tube leading off of it. So as urine gets made, it funnels into the next region. And the next region is called your renal pelvis. The renal pelvis is a hollow portion of your kidney where urine collects as it gets made. So all of these funnels are dumping into the renal pelvis. And the renal pelvis is like a little, be like your sink. It has a drainage tube at the bottom of it. So as the urine gets made, it gets funneled into the renal pelvis. And then the renal pelvis has a drainage tube that the urine can leave your kidney through. And I know my picture is kind of cutting this off but it says it's a hollow chamber in the kidney where urine collects as it's made. Well, it has a drainage tube at the other end, which would be this right here. And that drainage tube is called the ureter. You have two kidneys, so you have two ureters. Now, again, don't get the, the capsules mixed up with the layers of the kidney. And if you have the coloring book, it talks about the kidney, the ureter, the urinary bladder, and the urethra. Those are the organs of your excretory system. And then if you flip to page 146 in my book, it talks about the renal capsule, the renal cortex, the renal medulla. It talks about the hilum. It talks about the renal artery. It talks about the renal vein. It's all in there. But in the case, remember, the capsules, those are the membranes around the outside of the kidney. And then you have the renal fascia the adipose capsule, and then the renal capsule. Then you have three layers of the kidneys, the cortex, which is like the skin of the kidney, the renal medulla, which is the middle area that's folded in such a way it forms these things called pyramids. And that's where most of the action is going to take place. That's where your nephrons are going to be found. And then the renal pelvis is just kind of like this little hollow chamber, like a sink where urine collects, but then it has a drainage tube that comes off of it.
as you can see here. Now this picture, you can see how the right kidney is a little bit lower than the left kidney. You can see the renal artery, you can see the renal vein, and you can see how they attach to this area called the hilum. And then coming off of that, you can see the ureters. And in your coloring book, you can see these on pages 144, 145, and 146 in my coloring book. Remember, I use the coloring book that has the skull on it. As long as it's a coloring book by Caput, you might have a different version. You can find it. It's called the urinary system. Okay. But in the case of the drainage tubes, the drainage tubes, since the kidneys don't have a mucus lining, they can't store this acidic urine. So it's like a constant drip. So you constantly have stuff dripping out of your kidneys and it'll drip down these tubes called the ureter. Now you have two kidneys, so you have two ureters. They are made from smooth muscle, so they will peristalse. And that's gonna help keep the urine dripping down as it goes. And the ureter will then take the urine to your urinary bladder. Now, your urinary bladder does have folds on the inside. And if you think back to when we talked about the stomach, Anytime something has folds that are only meant to stretch, we call those folds ruga. So the folds inside of your stomach were called ruga. The folds inside of your gallbladder were called ruga. The folds inside of your urinary bladder are called ruga. Your urinary bladder has to stretch in order to hold that urine. And the bottom of the bladder has a sphincter muscle in a region called the trigon. And this trigon sphincter is important because it's one of the only sphincter muscles you have in your body that's made from voluntary muscle. You had to learn to control it. You had to learn to be potty trained. You can control your trigon sphincter. And the trigon sphincter controls the flow of urine out of your bladder through another tube called your urethra. And again, my little picture is, getting, is cutting it off, but you can see the term urethra in the picture there. So don't get the ureter and the urethra mixed up. Okay? The ureters are the two drainage tubes that come from the kidney to the bladder. The urethra is the drainage tube that urine leaves the bladder and we excrete those waste products. Now, until this point, we have not talked about differences between boys and girls. The excretory system is one of the few places in the body that there is a difference between a boy and a girl a male and a female. In the case of the excretory opening, they have different names. Okay. In males, the hole that you urinate through is called your urogenital opening. Ladies, the hole you urinate through is called your urinary meatus. And the reason for that, gentlemen, your reproductive system shares the urethra with your excretory system. So gentlemen, you just have one opening. Your uro for urine, genital for reproductive system. Uro genital opening. Urine and sperm come out the same opening. They can't come out at the same time, but we'll talk about that when we do the reproductive system. Ladies, your excretory system is not attached to your reproductive system. Your urethra is not shared. So you have two openings. You have a urinary meatus for urine, and then you have a vaginal opening for your reproductive system. 